Um, <clears throat> so we've got 10 more minutes, uh, Francis, is that right? Yeah. Okay. So I could either like go like crazy on uh, 30 slides in 10 minutes, or I could sort of stop here and take a lot of questions and maybe go over something that you did not understand. And uh, I think probably that would be better. Uh, and then you can read the other material in principal component analysis, which is it's pretty small anyway. I wasn't going to talk too much about it. So, um, which one do you think is best? Okay. Okay. So, <clears throat> here it is. That's the definition. Um, now, I could give you a definition, but let's, I'm going to try to tell you what it does, which I think is, is a lot more important than just the definition. So you can have the definition, that's nice, but let's go through the examples, which would be better. <coughs> so there's two things. So people often talk about singular value decomposition or principal component analysis. These are almost exactly the same thing. So PCA is kind of like doing singular value decomposition or SVD when you standardize your data. And in fact, the idea behind it, it's exactly the same, it's just the way you define it is slightly different. The idea of principal component analysis is to say, okay, let's try to look at our data set. It's, it's typically will be a multivariate data set. So it could be a gene expression data set or a flow cytometry data set. We've got several variables. And because you've got lots of variables, it's very difficult to visualize a multivariate data set um, uh, when you have more than two dimension, right? Because in fact, we're not very good at looking at things, at data sets that have more than two dimensions because it's hard to visualize on the computer or on a piece of paper, right? Three dimension, you can still do it, uh, but still it's quite difficult. So what principal component analysis is trying to do is to say, okay, let's try to look at the data and let's try to put it in a way that's going to be much easier to visualize. Let's try to uh, 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 reduce the dimension of the data by only keeping um, <clears throat> the information from the data that's most relevant. That is, what we're going to, going to try to do is to um, look at the data in a way that shows us the most variability in the data. So let me show you an example of this. <coughs> so <coughs> why is it nice? Because it's a dimension uh, reduction uh, technique. And this is very nice because sometimes you've got a huge data set, multivariate, you don't know how to look at it, it's very difficult. So you can sort of simplify the data set, and this is going to be easier maybe to do some clustering, and you're going to hear about clustering next, or maybe doing some discriminant analysis. So let's say you've got two uh, um, big cohorts of patients, one that have some kind of disease, one that, uh, that don't have the disease, and you'd like to know, you'd like to discriminate between the two by taking a sample of something. But if the sample is multivariate, like you do a flow cytometry ex uh, experiment, you take a blood sample, and then you've got tons of markers, you have no idea how to look at this data. It's multivariate. How can you find something that will help you discriminate with it? So maybe you can try to reduce the data in something that's simpler to look at, and that will help you in trying to discriminate. In my opinion, it's most important when you do exploratory data analysis. Uh, so we're trying to find the most important signal in data, uh, and this will help us in projecting the data to look at things as we like. <coughs> So here's an example. So this is a two-dimensional data set. It's really a tall example, but I wanted to start with something like that because you, it, it's going to be easier to understand. <coughs> so what principal component analysis is trying to do is to look at the data. Here's two-dimensional. And it's going to say, try to find the, um, the direction in the data that has the most variability. And that's this one in red. It's saying that if you follow this line, this is where there is the most variability in the data. Okay, and this is called the first principal component. Then after that, it's going to say, let's try to find the second uh, uh, direction where there's the most variability that's orthogonal to the first one. That will be the green one. In fact, here there's only two dimensions, so you can only have two orthogonal directions, right? So the first one is the red, the second is the green. So the idea of principal component analysis is that you're given these things in two dimension. Maybe you'd like to reduce the dimension. Here you can say that there's almost nothing going on in that direction. So you could almost say, well, I only need that direction to look at the data to explain most of the variability in the data. 
So the first idea is to say, okay, maybe I can remove some of the things that I don't really need. So here it's, in, it's a two-dimensional plot, but in fact you can see that the green dimension, the green direction does not show you very much. There's nothing going on in that direction. So you could just retain this direction. So you're going from a two-dimensional to one-dimensional data set. Then the other thing is you, you might say, okay, maybe there's a better way to look at this data. Maybe I shouldn't use the X, uh, the X and Y axis like I have, but maybe I could rotate it so that the red line becomes my X axis and the green line becomes the Y axis and it will be easier to visualize. Is that sort of clear what we're doing? So trying to find the line of the, the most changes, the most variability in the data? then you're going to look for the orthogonal that is uh, the most variability in the data. And in three dimension, it's the same. You're looking at a data set in three dimension, you're trying to look for the most variability in the data, then you're looking to one that's orthogonal and the most variability in the data, you're gonna find that one, and then orthogonal to these two, you don't have any more choices because it's three dimension. So once you've, you've uh, so let's say the dimension is n, let's say you've, you've found the first n minus one, uh, <clears throat> principal components, then the last one is given because it has to be orthogonal to all the others. So when you have an array that's a data set, does it mean that it's each gene is a dimension? Uh, typically, well, you, could, you could do it uh, either way. You could either say, I'm going to try to do, it depends what you want to look at. So let's say you've got um, uh, two dimensional array genes cross samples. You might say, my variables are samples and I'm going to try to do look at the samples in terms of their gene expression, or you could say the other way, you're going to say, I'm going to try to look at gene expression as a function of the sample. So it depends what you care about and what you want to look at. So typically it will be genes, but sometimes people want to look at samples. For example, let's say you've got um, 20 uh, uh, cancer patients, and maybe you'd like to explore the different types of cancer to see if there's any subtypes or something. So in that case, maybe you want to look at the samples in function of the expression. So this is kind of looking at the, the gene signature, things that maybe will help you to visualize the different subtypes of cancer. And it's hard to visualize that when you've got 10,000 genes, but maybe there's only a few genes that will help you to discriminate between the subtypes. So does each circle represent No, uh, well, here it represents nothing because it's a toy example. Um, but, but in that case, it would be yes. So here, this is another toy example. So there's sort of two uh, artificial clusters. <coughs> and you can see that this time, uh, PCA is saying this is the first direction where there is the most changes, the red one. And then this is the green. OK? And it's orthogonal to the red. <coughs> and this is the value of the contribution to each of the principal components. So you can see that this one explains uh, most of the variability, variability, and then this one explains a bit of the variability. Um, so then, using principal component, you can say, okay, let's try to rewrite the axis so that the first PCA becomes my x-axis, or the, the y-axis, and then the green, the, the x-axis. So you just rotate using the, the principal component, and say this is the best way to look at it. So I'm going to show you an, some examples that are more interesting because these are sort of toy examples. Um, actually, let's, let's go in R and I'm going to show you that because I think this is pretty interesting. So this is a data set that's available in R. It's called the Crabs data. Uh, it's just uh, a bunch of uh, crabs that you, there's, uh, I'm, I'm going to show you the data. So you're just measuring a bunch of crabs. There's some blue and orange crabs, male and female. So you, you should have four groups, male, female, blue, and orange. So if I look <coughs> at the data, this is what I see. So... <coughs> um, Okay, they, and, and you're measuring four variables. I can't remember what they are, but I think it's the, uh, the length of the, the legs, of the body, or things like that. And based on the four variables that you measure, you will want to see the four different classes of crabs. Either they're female, blue female, uh, blue male, orange female, orange male. 
Okay, and in fact here I show you with the symbols the different uh, classes of crabs. And you can see that it's very difficult to discriminate between the four subgroups. Uh, they are almost all of the same here. So if you look at the data, this is all the possible 2D scatter plots using the four variables that we have in the data set. I can't see very much where the four groups are, even though you know I put the symbols so you can see there's a triangle plus uh, circles and uh, the cross. It's very difficult to see the four different groups. It's just because naturally maybe these four variables, these four projections are not the best way to look at the data. But maybe what we can do is we can say, okay, let's try to do singular value decomposition to try to find maybe directions that might be more interesting where there's the most variability and try to project the data into uh, these directions. <coughs> so here I show you another uh, two-dimensional plot. So if I zoom in into one of these 2D scatter plot, you can see there's one group over here, there's another group over here, there's one here, one here. So you can sort of see there's a slight difference between the grouping, but it's very difficult to <coughs> see them. Now if I do singular value decomposition, and I'm going to plot um, the principal component or the, the data projected on the principal component. This is what, uh, okay, this is just plotting the first and second principal component. So still you don't see, it's a bit better, but you don't see a clear uh, separation of the groups. So remember there's several principal components. So you, typically you will look at the first few that explain most of the variability. So here I tried one and two, but in fact one and two wasn't the best. So I've tried also one and uh, two and three to see what I get. And if you try two and three, you're gonna get something that much better. Okay, so here this is two and three, and you can see that there's a much better separation. There's one group, another group, one here and one here. So looking at the data uh, that way, you can actually see a much better separation of the four groups. Okay, and in fact, you can see that if you take into consideration the four variables, you can almost separate or discriminate the four groups. But it's very difficult to do it. There's information coming from the four variables, and if you were just to look at 2D scatter plots, you wouldn't really do that. But if you do principal component analysis, you kind of see that here. Yeah. So this is really exploratory. At this point, you know, I'm not trying to discriminate or anything. It's just to try to help me to visualize uh, uh, the data. Maybe now you could say, okay, uh, I've done is uh, PCA, and I'm going to keep the first three or first four principal components, and then I'm going to try to do clustering on these, and you're going to talk about clustering next. But this could help you to maybe cluster your data better. Okay, so that's a good question. So typically, you don't really know uh, how many you should keep, but what you could do, so here I look at an expression data set, um, running a bit out of time, but I'm just going to show you that plot. Actually, it's in my slides. So. What you can do is that <coughs> when, when you do PCA, not only will it give you the, the principal component, but it will also give you uh, the strength of each principal component. So here you can plot that kind of like a bar plot. Here you can see this one is very important, this one's pretty important, this one's pretty important, and then it bec it, it's becoming slightly flatter over here, right? So you could sort of look at this plot, of course it's going to be slightly subjective, um, but you can see that after the, the first three components doesn't change very much. There's not much of a gap, so maybe you could stop. So looking at these kinds of plot can help you a little bit in choosing. But there's been lots of debates, lots of theory on how you could sort of choose. Um, people will typically say, well, maybe pick the, uh, the first principal component that explains maybe 80% of the variability in your data set or something like that. But there's no rule. There are more, you know, rule of thumbs that you can use. Which component is each component will be kind of like a new axis in, in, in your system. So kind of like a direction where you should look at. So it's like a vector. I have problems to relate this with the blue and red or what, what a component is. So a component will be, okay, let's say you're looking at data in two dimension. Okay, a component will be like a line, like the direction in which you should look. So it's like a direction. 
Um, you, well, it's difficult to do 3D plots because you don't see very much with 3D. So typically you will do 2D. But, excuse me. I know with some uh, commercial software, they can make 3D plots for <coughs> Yeah, but they, you, I mean, you can in R as well. You can do very nice 3D plots, but the, you, you, the human eye is not very good at looking at 3D plots. Except if you can maybe rotate some of these and do like fan fancy things, but it's very difficult. So PCA can help you to get a good to a good 2D plot because if you just do the the basic 2D projection, sometimes you won't see anything. But if you say, okay, let's try to do PCA to look at the directions where there's the most changes, where the where is where it's the most interesting, then maybe doing just a simple 2D on the PCA will help you. How do you label the axis? PCA1, PCA2, PCA3. No, it's um, well. So that's a good question. So if 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 the variables are different, if the units of the variables are different, then it's basically the PCA will be a linear combination of the original variables. Okay. So if you've got two things that are sort of very different, PCA won't they won't be you you won't be able to put a measure on it because you will will be very difficult. And that's one of the criticism of PCA is that people would say, well, that's nice, but then the variables that I get, I cannot reinterpret them because there's no scale anymore, there's nothing. So that's why I really say it's a way to explore data, to visualize data. But I wouldn't necessarily say it's a way to do statistical inference. It's just a way to explore data sets. What's the, uh, the difference between looking with a PCA or looking through cluster analysis? It's different. So cluster analysis will try to cluster. Okay, PCA, we're not trying to cluster, we're just trying to visualize data. Okay, so cluster analysis, you might cluster, but then you still have the same problem, is that the way you're going to look at your data might not be the right way. PCA will say, maybe you can look at it in some other projection. You know, if, you, if you've got, in 3D, for example, you're trying to say, okay, I've got me three, the, these three dimensions, these, these are the axes, but maybe this is not the, the right way to look at it. Maybe I should rotate it in another way, and this is the way I'm going to look at the data better. So it's just a, a way to explore the data. Whereas clustering, you're trying to do in front, you're trying to say there are that many clusters and here are the points in the clusters. So I think it's time to stop, take a break, and I'm glad to take questions now. <laughs>